Yes, welcome everyone. Marijuana Time Show for November 16th, 2017. I am your host, Joe Clare. You can find myself and many other great writers over at MarijuanaTimes.org. All the latest on the marijuana community, the industry, all the news and opinion you need. MarijuanaTimes.org. You can find these videos there as well in shareable form. So we'd like you to go share them. That'd be awesome. Stories we're talking about today... Marijuana shops in Colorado continue to break records when it comes to sales. Also, a college basketball player, well, now NBA basketball player. <laughs> that was a slip I'll explain in a minute. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns has said that he believes medical marijuana should be legal for NBA players, meaning they shouldn't get suspended, fail drug tests, all that stuff. We'll talk about that. And also, if you thought that as we told you the other day, that they're aiming for maybe April or May when it comes to marijuana legalization in New Jersey. Well, hold on a minute, because that may not be the case. Talk about all that coming up. But first, I want to tell you that the Marijuana Times Show, of course, is brought to you by NatureSideCannabis.com. If you're a cultivator, a legal cultivator in places like California or Colorado or Oregon or Washington or elsewhere, there's probably a lot of regulations you need to follow in your cultivation, plus, if you're putting harmful pesticides and chemicals in your cultivation, in your grow, stop doing that right now. I'm telling you right now, stop doing that. It's You need all natural pesticides, organic. You need NatureSideCannabis.com. They can help you become uh, regulatory compliant and help you uh, give you a, a better product a safer product for you to give to your customers. Check them out. Proud sponsor of the Marijuana Times show, NatureSideCannabis.com. This first story comes from MarijuanaTimes.org. Story by some guy named Joe Claire. He sounds pretty awesome. Marijuana shops in Colorado taking another $136 million in the month of September. Now, these are new estimates from the cannabis. And since they don't actually give out numbers like this straight from the uh, Colorado state government. What the cannabis does, they go through every month and they extrapolate the tax revenue numbers based on the tax rate and figure out the sales in that fashion. So for September of 2017, they say 136 million in products in recreational and medical marijuana shops uh, during the first three quarters of the year. Cannabis shops in Colorado exceeded 1.1 billion in sales. Now, to put this in perspective, Colorado is not a huge state. You know, in relative terms to other states, they're not massive. They don't have a massive population the way like California or New York or Texas or Florida obviously does. And they're this is what they're they're doing. Three years. It'll be four years coming up here in a couple months. The retail sales have been a thing in Colorado and well through nine months of this year. They exceeded $1.1 billion, which is up 19% from the same period last year now. Just about all these stories include economists saying, well, you know, it's going to plateau at some point, probably in the next couple of years. I don't know if I really buy that for a few reasons. First of all, estimates of that kind are impossible to make. You know, a lot of what you're trying to estimate in, when, future, when it comes to future marijuana sales in the legal realm is how big the illegal market is, because that's where a lot of those people are going to come from, most of them, the vast majority, 90 95% probably, are going to come from the illegal market and just start buying legally. There's going to be some people who are like, oh, well, it's legal now. Maybe I'll start smoking. But for the most part, it's going to be people who buy on the illegal market. And the thing about predicting markets and economies is that they're not numbers. An economy is not a number. It's not a pattern. It's people. Millions of people, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people in the case of Colorado, whatever, all making decisions on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour, minute-to-minute basis on whether or not they're going to go to the dispensary and buy it. They're going to buy it from their dealer. Maybe the maybe the dealer has a strain they need for medical purposes. Maybe the dispensary doesn't. Maybe the retail store doesn't. Maybe the retail store is uh, too far. Maybe the retail store is two miles away, but the, the dealer is at the end of the block. It was going to go to him. Maybe he has better prices. Maybe he has better stuff. Maybe he's uh, maybe he's a buddy. We're going to sit and watch uh, Pineapple Express together and chum it up. An economy, a market... Is people, people taking actions, 
That's what it is. It's not numbers. It's not, well, you know, the rate of growth has decreased over the first nine uh, months of uh, compared to 2016. That's There's no way to know. And who knows if there will be a plateau when it comes to sales. Maybe they'll go up to a point. Maybe they'll drop for a little while. Maybe they'll come back. You don't know. Economies and markets are people. They're not just, you know, numbers and math equations. That's not the way it works. This next story is from CBS Sports. Dot com. Earlier, I called Carl Anthony Towns a college basketball player. He's, of course, an NBA player and a great NBA player. He's a great college player. And in terms of full disclosure, I live in Kentucky. I do this show from Kentucky. And Carl Anthony Towns uh, played for Kentucky for a year on a team. And I watched go 38-1. and one. Towards the end of the year, he was unstoppable. He was a rookie of the year in the NBA and an amazing center, an amazing player. Carl Anthony Towns. Basically, I'm a huge fan. That's why I call him a college player because I still think of him in that 38-1 Kentucky team, which was, oh, if you know anything about college basketball, you know how heartbreaking that was. 38-1, the loss to Wisconsin in the Final Four. Oh, oh I'm going to get emotional thinking about it. you see me cry on camera. It's not good. <laughs> well, maybe it is. <laughs> maybe crying is what you people need. And they're like, hey, did you see that guy crying on Facebook and YouTube? about college basketball. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. Don't judge me. Anyway, Carl Anthony Towns says uh, the NBA should remove marijuana from the banned substances uh, list. He said, if your commissioner, well, CBS asked him, or ESPN asked him, rather, this is a CBS story. If your commissioner, Adam Silver, and could make one change to the rules of the NBA, what would it be? Carl Anthony Towns said, I agree with David Stern with marijuana. You don't have to actually make it Mary J or half-baked. I guess he means like the stereotypical way, like, you know, hey, NBA players, blaze up some fat doobies or whatever. He said, you don't have to do it like that, but you could use the chemical properties in it to make a lot of people better. That's something that Adam Silver has to do. That's out of my control, but maybe legalizing marijuana. Not fully legal where people are chimneys, but using marijuana as a beneficial factor as an athlete, as a person living daily. And a lot of people do that too. They, um, they'll say things like, well, you can't you know, smoke like a chimney or maybe recreational is a little bit too far, but medically that's, you know, we're we're going for that. They're trying to um, mitigate what they said. Like what they said was outrageous. Being for medical marijuana, marijuana is not outrageous at all, not in the least. In fact, like I said the other day, or maybe it was yesterday, a lot of polls, 80, 85, 90 percent of people agree with you. Medical marijuana is not a radical idea. Being against medical marijuana is extremely radical. Um. Talents continued. Uh, I think a lot of times fans forget that sometimes there may be some things that are banned that may not be the greatest for playing basketball, but for everyday living off the court, sometimes those things are legal and could help us. And obviously this battle has been going on in the NFL, the NBA. A lot of players have come out, former players, especially in the NFL, and said, you know, we were hooked on pain pills. Oh, we have concussions. We have problems. We have pain, unbearable pain from years of playing football and getting slammed uh, in the head and other body parts by grown men. <coughs> excuse me and um maybe instead of dangerous and addictive pills dangerous and addictive pills maybe some medical marijuana may be in order um anyway towns continue i've done a little bit of research uh they asked him how much research he's done he said i've done a little bit because just anything medical always intrigues me just to see how the world is getting smarter about treating our bodies there's a lot of other conditions and diseases that can be helped by using these properties and uh, that are in medical marijuana and benefit people's lives. Uh, he went on to say his mom's worked at Rutgers University of Medicine uh, for 20 plus years. So he's familiar with, you know, the medical world. And it's it's great. Another voice, another voice, a famous voice. Car Anthony Towns, NBA superstar, saying, well, like I said, it's not, it's not a radical thing. You know, it makes news still because it's new. And it's a celebrity saying it. But look at any poll. It's not radical at all. Now, the other day we were talked about, the last couple of weeks we've been talking about Chris Christie uh, term limiting his butt out of, I won't comment on the size of his butt, I'm running a professional broadcast here, got thrown out on his butt, term limited out from uh, being a New Jersey governor. Now, Phil Murphy's New Jersey governor. He said he wants to legalize cannabis. And a lot of people in the legislature feel the same, but the story is from NJ.com. Maybe 
Now, the new Speaker of the New Jersey Assembly, Craig Coughlin, is not the biggest fan of the legal marijuana. He said that he is, during a news conference, he has not indicated whether or not he sports legal pot. Quote, I want to make sure it makes sense, said Coughlin, a member of the Assembly since 2010, as with any bill, particularly any bill that would create something new. I think the devil is really in the details. I think we need to understand it in its totality. Even if we're going to do it, he went on, I want to make sure the bill is the right bill. Now, to be fair, you know, you know a lot of you are out there saying, oh, just do it, just get it done. But he's right. You know, details are important. It can be a horrible legalization bill that needs to be made better. Uh, hopefully that's what he's talking about. Hopefully he's not talking about something that's uh, in, the, in the parlance of some people, quote unquote, too permissive, not restrictive enough. I'm not a fan of the restrictions and the taxes and the regulations when it comes to legal cannabis. I understand the point. I understand this political climate we live in, but just it's enough. It's enough. It's not people treat it like it's nuclear waste. You can't be within a thousand feet of a school and, you know, you have to you can only buy a certain amount. And but you can go to a liquor store. I can go to a liquor store right now and buy 10 fifths of Jim Beam and nobody will give me a second look. God, can I be like, yeah, I have no party tonight? I'm like, you're damn right, buddy. I am. <laughs> I got 10 fifths of Jim Beam. We're getting liquored up tonight. But in most retail shops, and, and it's probably the limit that's going to be in a lot of states, an ounce. And you can only buy it at a certain time. A lot of cities and states have uh, hours that you can be open and so on and so forth. I understand, like I said, there are going to be some regulations. Um, but New Jersey, it looks like legalization in New Jersey is not quite a done deal just yet. It probably is. This guy's just probably a you know speaking politician. He's erring on the side of caution. But um, it looks like next year uh, that there should be very little in the way of marijuana legalization, adult use legalization in New Jersey. We'll see what kind of bill that the legislature comes up with out there. And, um, well, of course, we'll keep you posted here at the Marijuana Times. I am Joe Claire. It's November 16th, 2017. This has been the Marijuana Times show brought to you by NatureSideCannabis.com. Organic, natural pesticides for your cannabis grow. NatureSideCannabis.com. Dot com. Go like and share these videos, and we'll see you next time on the Marijuana Times Show.